Okay, for this project, we're going to make a former, a former for our for our chocolate mould. Um, with this, we can vacuum form it, and um, then we can melt some chocolate and pour it into the mould. A little bit like a jelly mould, but we do need to make a former to start with. So, first of all, for step one, we're going to cut our wood to the correct length. So, tools we're going to need. We're going to need a tenon saw. We're going to need a square and we're going to need a pencil, a ruler and a bench hook. So I start off with a piece of wood, I've got a length of wood. Um, the wood is 40 millimeters across or 4 centimeters. What we need from this is 15 centimeters or 150 millimeters length. So step one put my ruler on the piece of wood, on the piece of MDF, and I mark out 15. This is going to be split into three parts, like this section here. So each section, we're going to divide 15 by 3, so we're going to have 5, 10, 15. I put a mark at 10, and a mark at 5. So I put my marks on, what I need to do now is get my T-square. I'm going to mark the straight edges. And this, these are the lines I'm going to use as a guide to cut with the saw. So I'm going to go round and do the top, and then I'm going to come round, and I'm going to do the sides. This will show me this will make sure that I'm cutting a straight line. So I've got those, I'm just going to do this side as well so I can see what I'm doing when I'm sawing. Just like that. So first of all, as you can see on this one, we're only going to cut about two, three millimeters down. So I'll get my tenon saw, and I'm left-handed, so I'm going to be cutting on this side, but if you're right-handed, you're going to be cutting on this side. So I'm swapping around, I grip it like this, I have my pointy finger pointing, keep making sure the saw is going to be straight. And I'm going to start with the, um, the cuts that aren't going to be all the way through. Start by cutting on an angle to get into the MDF, and then once it's in, I can straighten the blade up. And cut down like so. Give it a tap to knock off the sawdust, and move on to the next one. Finally, put the wood again up against the, um, the bench hook, push it, push it tight, hold, grip it firmly, and we're going to cut all the way through. Step two, which is going to involve using the sanding machine. Okay, Go. okay the next step um, is to put a draft angle on our, um, our chocolate mould. So we're going to create a taper all the way around this side to make it look more like a bar of chocolate. Um, I've written the word bottom on just so we don't get confused on the bottom of the chocolate mould. And so we're going to put this bottom up to sand it. So first job, before we um, turn the machine on, I'm just going to loosen the two handles at the side and just create an obtuse angle 
about like so, about 110 degrees. Tighten it back up, and then we're ready to go. Um, remember, in health and safety, we need a pair of safety goggles. We will turn the extraction unit on first. This will be quite noisy. <laughs> Okay, step three, um, we're going to make it look a little bit more like a chocolate bar by putting these um, chamfers to separate it into three separate pieces. We've already cut um, where we want the, um, the spaces to be, where we want the chamfers to be, so I'm just going to move that one out of the way. We're going to use for this a square file. Um, we're going to use a bench hook against the bench, push, let's remove some of the sawdust, push our um, chocolate mold against our former against the um, against the bench hook position the file so it fits into the um, the saw mark and then we're going to go backwards and forwards until we start to get the basic shape. Once we've finished that, we'll go over it all the way around with some sandpaper just to soften the edges. And what we're looking for is something that looks a bit like that, like a chocolate bar. Okay, thank you. Go. Okay, now that we've um, cut out all our pieces for the top on the laser cutter, I'm just going to glue them on using PVA glue. They can go either way, just have a bit of glue on here, we can do it either portrait or landscape. So I can put it down this way, or we can put it this way. For this chocolate bar I'm going to put them portrait so put the bee like that and we'll carry on down the chocolate bar the nose and once that's dry that will be ready for laser cutting and that's it ready so it's at this point the glue's all dried we've got the um, the laser cut um, letters and the face on top of the um, on top of the um, former and we're ready for vacuum forming just in order for us to get it out of the plastic, um, 
a little bit of a little tip. Um, if you just sprinkle it, sorry, with a little bit of talcum powder and rub that in. It will come out of the mould a little bit easier. But we're only using only using thin plastic, so it shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. So we're just going to use, I think it's half a millimeter. I believe it's polythene for our vacuum former. You can go as, th as thick as you like. The thinner the material the more defined you're going to get your images. So, we place it on top of the vacuum forming bed and we lower the handle. The former goes down into the machine and then we can lay our plastic on top. We're going to lock it in place to create a seal. So the plastic's held in firmly. And then I will pull the heater on top. The heat has been warming up for about 15 minutes, which so will be nice and warm. And it will only take a few seconds with the thickness of the plastic um, for the plastic to be melt and be ready to vacuum for. So keep checking as you can see, it started to go. We're not quite there yet. We're looking for a bit more of a dip. Just about like that. So the next step, we pull, pull the handle up, the plastic covers it, and we turn the pump on. And there is our vacuum fold chocolate mold. I'm just going to give it a little bit of pressure, a little bit of blow, just to try and separate it from the um, from the former, and then we can turn it off. And unlock it, and with fingers crossed, it pops out, and we have our mold ready. Once we've cleaned it, ready for the chocolate to be poured into. Are we on? <laughs> Super. Right, for the first bit, we've made our plastic mold, which we're going to pour our chocolate into. I've just given this a wash, but what I'm going to do now is just give it a little wipe to make sure any talcum powder or any dust um, from the workshop has been fully removed. So we'll give that a good clean. The next step, we have our chocolate, but the chocolate, as you can see, is in solid blocks. We need to melt this into a liquid. To do that, we have a kettle full of boiling water, the kettle's just boiled. We're going to have a um, saucepan and we're going to have a mixing bowl. We're going to create what we call a bain-marie. A bain-marie. The boiling water is going to go into the pan. The bowl's going to sit on top. The pan's going to go on the, um, on the hob and the chocolate will go inside. So now we're going to turn the oven on. Um, I'm using um, electricity for this, but you can use gas or electric. Um, we're going to use this cooker ring here. So I'm just going to turn, push that in, in and turn it around. Of course, all cookers are going to be different, but this one works like so. As you can see, the ring has come on. And we rest our pan on top. What I'm going to do now is pour our water into the pan. The water doesn't need to be boiling. But it will just warm the bowl nicely in order for us to melt the chocolate. Okay, while the pan is warming up, while the, while the bowl is warming up, I'm going to break the chocolate into, um, into pieces. The smaller the pieces, the quicker the chocolate will melt. 
Now it's always better if we leave the chocolate inside the wrapper while we break it up, otherwise it could go all over the place. So let's we'll start by breaking it up. What I'm going to do with this chocolate, I'm going to try and create a marbling effect. So I'm going to melt the uh, milk chocolate first, and then I'm going to add white chocolate and mix it together. Obviously the milk chocolate is a lot harder than the white chocolate. As you can see, condensation is building up on that, so the bowl is getting nice and warm. Just test, you may need to use um, oven gloves for this, but it's at the top, it should be nice and cool. So, there we go, we put our milk chocolate into the bowl. The bowl goes on there, and there we have our bain marie. Can you see that? So what I'm going to use is a wooden spoon just to poke chocolate, just to stir the chocolate around the bowl until it melts. So we've stirred the um, chocolates for a few minutes, I think it's taken about five minutes to get to this stage. As you can see there are still a few, couple, of, um, couple of lumps in it, but on the whole it's melted. What I'm going to do now, as I say, I'm going to try and create a, um, a marbling effect. So I'm going to add some of the white chocolate and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to try and create something that looks a little bit like the shells you get um, Belgian chocolates. Oh, it's started. see that it's starting to melt into it and just be careful with the bowl it is if you're going to be touching the bowl make sure you only touch the top touching the rim of the bowl I'm just going to turn the oven down a little bit because the water is starting to boil and it only needs to be um, hot not boiling Once we've got all the lumps out, and I don't think the, the white chocolate's going to take very long, once all the lumps are out, we can then spoon the mixture into our um, chocolate mould. So we'll keep stirring this until it's fully melted. Go. Right, now that the chocolate's all melted, unfortunately the marbling hasn't really worked, but the chocolate has got a, a lot lighter. We're going to spoon this um, this mixture. Oh, there's a little bit of marbling taking place. We're going to spoon this mixture into our chocolate mould. So I've taken the bowl off the pan. I've turned the um, turned the ob off. As you can see, there's still a red light, so that means there's still danger there. There's still going to be heat coming from the hob. So I'll bring this out of the way, and I'm going to use a um, a dessert spoon or a tablespoon. To spoon the mixture into the mould. Just move the spoon out of the way. Don't worry about chocolate going over the sides because once once it's all set, um, it will just peel off. What we do need to make sure though is we're going to get is to get the chocolate level and to make sure the chocolate. Um, fits into all the little nooks and crannies um, from the pattern right into the bottom. So depending on how much chocolate you've got, I suppose it depends on how um, how full you can get your chocolate bar. You see, I've, I've made far too much, so what I'm going to do. I am going to be greedy and fill it right at the top. Again at this point, be careful. The 
chocolate mixture is, is hot um, you don't want you to get it on your skin so at that point there I'm just going to put the spoon back into the bowl pop it down and just give it a tap on each side until we get the chocolate nice and level once you're at that stage we'll put this on a tray and that can go in the fridge to cool down and that's it um, next step we will um, we will eat the chocolate yep um, listening to some of my colleagues I realized that um, I was uh, maybe not not tackling marble in quite the right way um, what I've done um, as, a, as, a, as a second trial um, chocolate bar is um, I've still got my um, my melted milk chocolate but this time I've got another mixing bowl and I've melted some white chocolate in this now the idea is to pour the white chocolate into the um, into the milk chocolate give it a little stir and we'll see what happens this is all experimental so well, let's see Again, if you wanted to, you could add nuts, fruit, um, could try all, all, all different things, but it is, it's, um, it's down to yourself, it's down to your knowledge, and it's down to you having a go and experimenting. Let's put that out of the way. So we've got the milk chocolate, we've got the white chocolate, and I think that seems to be working a lot better. I'm not going to stir it too much, I don't want to mix it, um, mix it together. But I think we'll pour that into the ch into um, the chocolate mould and see what happens. enough so again just give it a little tap on the sides just to make sure it's filling all the spaces all the gaps that you've used when you've been doing your laser cutting and there we go already I think we can see that that does work a lot better um, than my first attempt so I'm going to pop that on a plate and that is then ready for the fridge Okay, yeah. we're now at a point. I've taken the chocolate out of the fridge. Um, as you can see, the marbling one has worked um, has worked well. This at the second chocolate bar. Um, I've created some packaging. We're gonna we're gonna put um, a wrapper on our chocolate bar just to finish it off. So I've created a chocolate bar called Marbled, um, and on the wrapper we've included such things as the barcode, the net weight, and the ingredients. So I've just taken these out of the fridge, just so, so they should be nice and cool. So there we go. We're going to wrap this one up, I think, because we've, we've called it marble. So I'm going to use the marble chocolate um, and wrap this up. It's worked out quite well. So I've cut a piece of tin foil. I'm going to put the chocolate in the um, non shiny part and put it face down. a little bit too much here but we'll wrap it up and keep it as neat as possible I'm not very good at Christmas presents either so we'll wrap that up and then we'll add our label like so what I'm going to do for this, just to finish it off, is a little bit of double sided tape. I've created 
the size of this um, is about 130 by 130 which is as a square peel the double sided off wrap it around pull it as tight as we can and there is our finished chocolate bar.